Hi everyone, this is John Pokorova. It is uh, March 10th, 2022. Just a brief general market update today. Let's go over some charts, see what's going on in the market. Again, this presentation today is made by Rain King LLC for educational purposes. And I am an amateur individual growth stock investor not affiliated with IBD or MarketSmith. So let's talk a little bit about the big picture, talk a little bit about oil and some internals and market sentiment and continue to talk about where we are in this uh, bull market correction or bear market, depending on uh, what sector you're in. So the big picture overview, um, the typical chart, the super cycle concept um, still in place. I'm not gonna cover it in great deal here. You can see it in other videos, but um, big demographic drivers of the super cycle. And this monthly chart, is still uh, reminding people that, you know, some long-term trend lines could come all the way back down into the 11,000 area uh, for the NASDAQ composite and still be in the super cycle bull market. So this is the daily chart of the NASDAQ as of a couple days ago. Um, and I've just marked some of these levels. Probably the most important thing is this dark blue line, which is somewhere around this 11,000 area. That would be the support area that would um, remain in the bull super cycle uh, thesis. There's no doubt that technology stocks are in a bear market um, while commodities are in a bull market. So I think I shared this last time, but I wanted to do it again, geopolitical events um, and their effect on the markets. Um, you can pause your video player, but essentially when you look at a whole bunch of events over time, um, what's happens in the short term is versus six to 12 months out. If you squint these last two columns, you'll see that most of the returns six to 12 months out are uh, green. So let's talk a little bit about oil. This is a slide from uh, Shivako Capital. And they studied um, when oil was spiking, as we're seeing today, um, what was the S&P performance? And they actually identified eight um, particular cases. And I've just shown two of the cases on this chart here. The first one is 2004, and oil had spiked throughout 2004, almost 73%. Um, and then you say, what, what did the S&P do? Well, the S&P was positive. It actually was up plus 9%. The 1989, another oil spike of almost 78%, and the S&P still performed very well. It was up 27% in 1989. So the idea that you know, with oil spiking, you can't have the averages um, still perform is, is a myth. Um, Shivako Capital study went a little deeper. And here are the eight cases in the year that oil spiked an average of 86%, a median of 75%. And what did the S&P do? And you can see um, almost all of the cases, um, the S&P was positive for the year with a uh, medium of 11.16%. Probably also noteworthy is the spikes in oil. Um, each one of these cases um, did not uh, lead us into a recession. So that's kind of just an interesting kind of factoid that um, the initial thought is with oil spiking, we're going into recession, doesn't necessarily mean that, so stay open to it. So market sentiment, some internals. Uh, this is a chart of the new lows on the NASDAQ composite on a daily basis. Um, you know, I've just marked um, as the market came down and make new lows in the NASDAQ index, you know, we, we had 1755 new lows um, in the NASDAQ. The second low was 1344 and the most recent um, drop, we were at 792 for new lows. So this is, you know, this is really a small improvement, but I don't think it's really anything conclusive. Um, I would really want to see the new lows dry up to be less than 275 or, you know, much less, um, but on a consistent basis. We're just not there yet. Um, so it's, you know, it's still room, a lot of room to, to, to uh, work to be done. Here's the similar chart for the uh, NYSE, new lows. You'll notice that the, uh, the two lows in the uh, S&P were um, 792 in both cases. And they dried up a little bit as we spiked lower earlier um, this week to 500. 
again, I look at that and say it's small improvements, nothing conclusive yet. Um, and we want to see those um, consistently dry up. Right now, it's, you know, it's kind of a ping pong battle with things going up and down every day by two, two or three percent. So it's a very difficult um, environment right now still. This chart is the NASDAQ composite showing the percentages of stocks that are above their 200 day moving average. And you'll notice that the reading uh, as of a couple days ago was 22.6%. Um, and uh, you'll notice that when you get down in this range and this orange line shows you that um, you don't hit this level too often. And if you do hit it, you tend to go lower. Um, so that's certainly a, a possibility that we may go lower before we go higher. Similar chart, this is the S&P 500 stocks below the 200 day moving average little better than the NASDAQ. Um, it was at the 37 level. I drew this line at 45% in blue. You'll notice that every time we reached a level that went below the 45% level, we actually plunged um, pretty quickly and deeply down to the 25% level or more. Um, we're already moving that direction. So who knows if this is gonna turn around, um, but it's still a lot of work to be done in the market. This is the NAIM active managers. This is the exposure levels of active managers. Um, you know, they've been reducing exposure fairly rapidly the past few months. Um, they're currently at around a 30% uh, percent level. And in one respect, you could say eventually this money is going to be put back to work and it'll become fuel for either a rally or the next bull market. Um, I wanted to show you um, a little bit of a longer term view of the NAIM chart. This is that chart over um, a longer period of time, almost 15, 16 years. And you'll notice that, you know, when we're above the 80% level, that's kind of extreme optimism. And below the 30% level is uh, pessimism. And so I wanted to show this because. Um, just because, you know, we're down in the 30% level, as I showed at the last chart, um, doesn't mean anything specific yet. Um, you'll notice during COVID, we dropped way below the 30 level, and then we rebounded very, very quickly. And in green, we went into a bull market. But conversely, back in 07, um, you can see we went below the 30 level, and that was just the beginning of the bear market for the financial crisis. So don't get too hung up on uh, this sentiment indicator. They're really secondary to price um, followed by volume. So um, we just have to keep our eyes open and connect the action between price and volume with some of the sentiment indicators, but don't look at them in a vacuum. I talked last time about um, the economic cycle and um, where we were. And, and I kind of said, we're probably in this green uh, wedge of the chart, which is really kind of peak economic growth is, um, you know, when you see strength in the financials, the energy stocks, the material stocks, and we certainly are seeing oil and the metals and fertilizers, um, you know, being strong. Um, but where we go from here, it's, you know, it's not certain. I had a uh, question people ask me and say, well, are you telling us that, you know, we're at the very, very, very end of this um, uh, run in oil and metals? And that's not what I'm saying. Um, you know, these, these stocks could run for months. Um, they might, they're eventually going to top out. They'll top out and um, probably as we hit the bottom of the economic cycle, possibly if we go into a recession where other groups will um, start to rise to the surface, eventually growth stocks will come back in favor at some point. Um, but, you know, there's a bull market right now in these areas. Um, we don't know how long it's gonna continue. So take it day by day, but that's where the strength of the market is right now. So last video on February 27th, I took an examination of some of the group strength off the January low. And, you know, 10 days ago or so, we. We noticed that uh, the mining metals were strong, but we also noticed that leisure was strong and computer software um, had a number of names that were pretty strong. And I also noted that the food and grains um, had sharply turned up their relative strength. 
So looking at this today, um, this is actually, I think, I believe of last night, um, you know, a couple of interesting things. Leisure has had a sharp decline in relative strength, really come off strongly since we last had a video, as well as computer software has gotten hit and has had a sharp decline. Um, but you'll notice that the strong have gotten stronger, uh, mining, fertilizers, here's oil, and he actually coal has had a, a real surge in relative strength off the January low. This chart I used last time to really um, flag that even some of the most defensive groups, food and supermarkets and confectionery and candy and food package, these groups are also showing relative strength. These are some charts from um, Hostess and Hershey and um, some of these large conglomerates and supermarkets like Kroger's. Um, these are really defensive. Um, so this, you know, is this a leading indicator that maybe we are going towards recession? It's a possibility, but we have to really, really just watch price and volume. So back to the market, let's talk a little bit further about corrections and bear markets. So I wanted to share this chart, um, which is, um, you know, this is a chart of eBay back from 2000, the 2000 peak, which is shown here, and it shows two or three years out. And the point that I wanted to make is when growth stocks go through a very deep decline, um, this was a 74% decline with eBay. And, you know, there are growth stocks such as Shop and Square and Roku that are, are off 60, 70, 80%. So it's very similar that these uh, situation where growth has been really decimated. And the point I wanted to make is even though um, the, it, was, it turned out to be a full-blown multi-year bear market, um, eBay eventually started to work its way higher. You can see the relative strength and the price action. But what happened is, and this is really important point to, to, to really be aware of, you know, eBay tried to form a base. It tried to form a cup with handle, but it was very, very deep, 43%, not really proper. It failed. Then it tried to form a double bottom, didn't get the undercut that we like to see on the second leg. And that also did not break out. You'll notice that the market is moving its way lower, but yet eBay is holding up, it's going sideways. And then this last base, which I've shown in green, is only 23% deep and eBay forms a really proper double bottom. And you can see the outstanding relative strength. And this is right where the market was um, starting to bottom out. But the point is it takes, a, this, is, this is years that this took. And if you were in this base here, when the time right, when the market turned, you know, eBay had 150% move. So we want to stay engaged in the market. Not saying this is going to happen, but I'm just saying that it might be a while before growth can rebuild itself. And if I were to say, where are we? Well, growth stocks are probably here. You know, some of them have come down to ultimate lows. Some of them have popped higher to try and um, bottom. I mean, I think Upstart and Cloudflare and um, Daximity, others have had a little bit of a spike, but you'll notice they come back and they retest. And it's a process of uh, building the bottom of these bases. And this is a weekly chart. So this is an important reminder that this might take time and don't uh, feel like you have to jump back in and catch the bottom of the stock. So here's the two uh, major indices. We've got the S&P on the left and we have the NASDAQ on the right. Um, let's focus on the NASDAQ for a moment. Um, we are clearly in a downtrend. Um, we are still making lower highs. Um, what I wanted to point out, which was, um, you know, something I noticed was the first rally here where was an eight day rally and essentially got stopped at the 20 day moving average, which is in uh, this purple line. So we had an eight day rally. Then as we undercut and we undercut the initial January low by about 3.9%, and then we rallied. Well, we were only able to rally for six days and then we got capped at this lid at the 20 day moving average. And we've come down with some of the bad news of the past week. And you'll notice that, um, you know, this week we've only had really a two day rally and we ran right into the 10 day moving average and things turned the other way. 
we started to recover late in the day. But the idea that the rallies are becoming um, uh, less in terms of the number of days, as well as the amount of gain is getting smaller. Um, not a great situation. Um, so it's just something to be aware of that, um, you know, the downtrend is still firmly in place. And this is the corresponding S&P, which had a 2.6% undercut of the January lows. Now on the positive side, um, I did want to note that, you know, when we look about where we are today, roughly in this area, and I kind of drew this black line across the bottom here, um, you know, the market has been hit with a serious amount of bad news. You know, inflation reports, war in Ukraine, uh, rising rates. Well, it's a lot of bad news and we have not really broken lower. The market is um, trying to hang in there. Um, I view that as a positive right now. Doesn't mean we won't go lower, but it does mean the market is weathering a tremendous amount of bad news. So our two templates that we've been using in terms of trying to understand how a market could bottom. And you know, this is the 2011 bottom in August, September. It's messy. You'll notice that you know there's rallies, we come back and retest, rallies, we come back and retest. Um, you know, I was trying to say, where would we, where would we be um, if we were to try to put where we are in our chart? You know, we just had a, a new low, we undercut. You know, maybe we're trying to rally here. In 2011, we, got, we had a very strong rally to kind of get in the upper half of this decline. Um, but that well, all remains to be seen. Um, the other scenario is, you know, we could be headed for another wave down in a bear market. Um, you know, the market could rally, run into resistance and come back down. And maybe we're right here, correct, right now, relative to our current market. And we may have another thrust lower. We don't know. So we still have to be very, very open. We have to protect our portfolios, protect our confidence, and um, try not to get chopped up in unnecessary trading. So what are we looking for? Um, just to re-emphasize, we want to see a rally attempt that the breadth really improves, leading stocks to start to appear, and the advanced decline line um, is supportive of the rally. Um, I look for a positive divergence. I want to see the indexes either make a new low, and we see a real dry up in the number of new lows. The charts I showed earlier say we're just not there yet. We're still waiting for um, our second follow through day. Um, we haven't had a follow through day since the first one failed. You know, 1.25 is the minimum, um, but we really, really want to see um, two or three percent, excuse the typo. Um, we want to see, a, you know, IBD, you know, at one point used 1.7% for a follow through day. And with the volatility we're having, I would really prefer we get up closer to the 1.7, at least 2% to have a, a follow through day that might have some meaning. So we wanna see sentiment extremes. We have seen um, some sentiment of extremes, but they can remain there for um, quite a while. So that's why we don't trade off sentiment indicators. The news, when we do get a bottom, the news will be horrible. There's the Russian war, inflation, rates, growth. So we certainly have bad news. The key is to really be observing the market. You know, growth stocks um, will stop going down or even go up on bad news. That will be a sign that maybe the market is getting ready to turn and the market is all sold out. So we wanna keep building our, our uh, watch list. We wanna look for quality bases um, and new names. We want new merchandise that's showing good relative strength. And I would also advise um, use weekly charts more. Um, it reduces the noise. There's such volatility in the market. Use weekly charts to analyze basis to try and build your watch list. Um, sometimes it's, it clarifies um, how you see the patterns uh, with price and volume. So the summary is, you know, the Fed is, is in a very tough position. Um, they have to raise rates to try and slow or stop inflation. But once inflation has started and it's going, um, it can be very, very tough to alleviate. Um, these geopolitical events are actually putting literally gas on the fire um, in terms of the supply demand pressure is, excuse me, is going to even increase on material prices, metals, oil, energy. Um, so it's a very tough position for the Fed. 
Um, if the Fed gets too aggressive with rates, um, they could overshoot and they could um, roll the economy into a recession. Um, so it's a very delicate balance. We'll have to see how it plays out. Um, but the market will tell us when it's ready to bottom. Um, we just have to be observing and paying attention. The last thing we wanna have happen is this inflation to continue on an extended basis and go into a recession. That's the dreaded stagflation word, which uh, really hasn't been mentioned since the 1970s. So keep observing the market day to day, be flexible um, and don't make predictions. Don't try to pick the bottom. The surest way to be wrong is to make predictions. We wanna keep our mental capital. We wanna have a clear head to recognize the next opportunity. And um, I continue to tell some of my friends that, I, that are in the market and um, that you, know, you don't have to be the first person back into the market, but you definitely wanna be there when the time is right. In a sense, patience, patience, and patience takes patience. So I wanna thank everybody for joining this short video update. You can join me on my Twitter, here's my handle, or I do have a YouTube channel where you can see any of the past general market updates, as well as presentations I've made at the Blue Sky events. I thank you all for joining and we'll see you at the next video update in, in a couple of weeks. Thanks everyone.